What's up, y'all? My name's Sean, and I'm glad you found my channel. I'm doing a whole new series on beginner lessons from day one, just picking up a whistle for the first time, working your way through the first few exercises and first few tunes and first few ornaments. I'm coming at it from a traditional Irish music perspective, so that's kind of how I'm going to be teaching it, starting with this episode about basics, what different types of whistles are out there, what you might want to start with, and some very first exercises to get you going. So stick around. This is definitely beginner series. So before we dive in too far on this, I would just want to make a couple other points. One, if you're looking for more advanced stuff, you probably just want to skip on through or wait till the next video comes out. And I won't blame you if you do that. Two, I've been made aware repeatedly on this channel that I have a tendency to talk rather quickly. And I know I also have a tendency to mumble, and those two things collide sometimes on this channel. So I'm going to make an effort to try and speak a little slower. Hopefully that's of value, and hopefully you guys don't mind if you're used to me rambling on at Mach 3. Hopefully you don't mind if it's a little bit slower for the purposes of these beginner lessons. If you've gotten this far, you've probably also spent at least a few minutes on Amazon or various other sites that might sell musical instruments, and if you spent more than five or ten minutes, you've probably been somewhat overwhelmed with the options, because there's a lot of different choices, a lot of different manufacturers, a lot of different price levels too. Ultimately, it boils down to two different types. There's conical bore and there's cylindrical bore. There's all sorts of different metals and things like this one's aluminum. There's a lot of other options that you can get, but those are the main physical differences that you'll find between types of tin whistles. What should you start with? The short answer is I would go with this one. This is a Clark Sweet Tone. In my opinion, it's the best one entry level whistle you can find. They're about 10 bucks, 15 bucks, somewhere in that range. The tone is reliable and consistent. It's a little unusual because it is conical bore and it's got the seam running down the back here, but this is the one that I would suggest if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, it's going to be perfectly fine. That being said, there's nothing wrong with Generations, with the original Clarks, Fadog, Oak, and there's probably a hundred other different options out there, and they're all some variant of this, either the cylindrical bore or the conical bore, and they're all probably going to be about the same. They're all mass-produced, they're all likely to have one or two little quirks. That's where I recommend going with this one, because of all of them, it seems to be the most reliable to me. So if step number one is buying a whistle, step number two is holding the thing. How do we hold it? Well, the general rule of thumb is right-handed players would play left hand over right, left-handed players would do the opposite. That's basically nonsense. There really is no right-handed or left-handed playing. I would play whatever feels more comfortable. That's really the answer to that question. Once you get to that decision, on a, on a high whistle, you're playing with fingertips, and you want to get the pads covering each of those holes. And as you're playing each note, the main thing you're going to want to listen for when you first start is, am I covering these holes completely? So that there's no air leaking out. And you'll hear that because the, whole, the note won't sound very clean. So for example, you can kind of hear as I roll my finger around off that hole, then, when I make a good solid connection, nice even tone, and that's what you're looking for when you first start making noise out of this thing. Important piece of the puzzle number three is breath control. When you're practicing, keep in mind that good tone comes not only from covering the holes correctly, but also making sure you're supplying the instrument with enough air, not too much, not too little, and there's going to be an exercise that we'll cover at the very end of this video that will help break that down, hopefully help kind of lock it in as you're practicing. Breath control is really important, and it's one of those things that needs some repetitive work because each whistle is different. If I tell you you're playing on a sweet tone, which is what this is, and it requires very, very little air, well, one, that's kind of a relative term. Very little to you might mean something different than it does to me. And two, even though we're playing the same instrument, they might be made just a little bit differently. So each one is going to require a little bit of practice and a little bit of muscle memory. So that way, as you're playing these tunes, you don't have to spend as much time thinking about, am I putting enough air into it? 
that kind of needs to be automatic. You don't want to waste a lot of time thinking about that. So we'll come back to that with our second exercise. But first of all, the one I want to start with is a very basic D scale. If you're familiar with musical instruments at all, if you've played something else and are coming to the whistle, then you'll be familiar with scales. If not, and this is your first instrument, then just follow along, I suppose. The basic D scale, assuming you aren't yeah, so make, hang on. make sure you get a D whistle. Don't buy a C whistle or don't buy like like this. That's an F whistle. It's awesome. It's great. But you don't need it. D. D whistles, right? D whistle. Always buy a D whistle first. Basic D scale, again, assuming you are in fact playing on a D whistle, goes like this. One octave, eight notes, lowest note that you can get on the on the D whistle, lowest note D, up to the middle octave D. So that's your scale. We'll do that again. Now if you notice, I separated the airstream in between each note. So that's called tonguing. And all you're doing is using your tongue and just hitting the back edge of this mouthpiece as you're playing it to interrupt the airflow. I like tonguing each note separately only because it helps me make sure that I'm hitting each note with the right amount of air, which gets into the second exercise that we're going to do right now, which I call octave jumping. We're going to do the exact same scale that we just did, the D scale, but we're having a little bit of a twist to it. Rather than going from D to E to F up the scale, we're going to play two notes back to back, but we're going to play one in the lower octave and one in the higher octave. Then we're going to change notes. As an example. And I would go from D to B only because you get beyond that and it gets very, very squeaky and you don't really need those high C sharp, high D, third octave D. And you're jumping the octave each time and what you're aiming for, just like when all of, all of these exercises, is good quality, clean tone. So if it squeaks, or it gets that kind of raspy in between part, like it's not quite sure what note you're shooting for, that's probably what the problem is. It's not sure what note you're shooting for because you're either supplying it too much air uh, in the case of the lower octave or not enough for the higher octave. So when you hit those notes and they don't sound right, pump the brakes, make sure you get them nice and clean. If you're stuck on one particular note, spend some time with it. Just do that for a second. Make sure you can get it evenly for as long as you want and make sure that you're in charge and you're able to play the quality of tone that you're looking for, that it sounds pleasant. So those are your exercises. We'll call it homework. Run those scales. I know playing scales aren't everybody's favorite thing to do, and they might make you want to throw the whistle out a window. So don't spend an hour doing it, but do them once or twice for a few minutes, maybe a couple minutes each time, and get good quality, clean sound. Again, that's what we're shooting for. Thanks for hanging with me on this first episode, first lesson in this series. Next week, we're going to play the first tune, which is Dawning of the Day. Uh, it's a great slow air march-ish kind of tune. It's one of the first ones that I learned, and I think it'd be a good one to start with. So stick around for that, and I'll see you all next week. Cheers, guys.